And I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. My name is Timothy Clements. I'm the uh, current chairman of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we, this is the runoff form. We had a form for the primary election, and we felt it was necessary for the community to uh, host a runoff forum for the candidates. Uh, this, this time we did it a little differently. We partnered up with uh, two great partners, Mr. Henry Ballard from Christian Fellowship and uh, Matt Woodward from The Gathering to uh, co-host the forum with us. And at this time, I'm going to ask those two gentlemen to come up and speak a little bit about um, responsibility advocates. Good evening. Uh, we're delighted about this particular partnership with the Chamber of Commerce and then also having the opportunity to introduce to the citizens of St. Bernard what we have embarked upon, what really has amounted to about three years of conversation about what can we do to help foster change in our parish and move our parish forward in a productive way. And so what has come out of that deliberation for those years is responsibility advocates where we simply advocate for responsible leadership both publicly and privately in order to bring about that change. And so that's going to cover a number of areas, whether it's the faith component, but because that's what we do, but also being engaged in other areas of education, the political culture, business. So we want to bring about this awareness and also raise the standard of responsibility for all of us so that we can move our parish forward. And so what we did in preparation for uh, this particular runoff, uh, we decided to hold conversations with the candidates. So we had one-on-one -on -one interviews with them. And what that enabled them to do is to have a little bit more time other than 90 seconds or um, two minutes to answer a question. They could put it in context, go in depth, speak from their heart, or answer it in any way that they saw fit, setting the record straight on some things, but speaking directly to the citizens. And so that's what we afforded them to do. And so for all of the candidates that did participate, I must say uh, we uh, kept it to the at-large races, so we did not do the individual districts, uh, so we did do the uh, at-large east, at-large west, the parish president, and then also we extended it to the representatives. But those interviews are available for your viewing on our website, our Facebook page, that you have an opportunity to maybe hear from the candidates and see a side of them that you may not have seen already. So I'll have Matt tell you about, again, where you can view them and anything else he wants to add. Uh, sure. The, the one thing that I did want to say, first of all, was thank you to the candidates that, that were able to make it and to participate in everything that we did. It was a fantastic process. It was a great time to be able to hear from their hearts, their vision, what made them tick, you know, what they're concerned about. And so it was a great opportunity for all of you as well to hear exactly what we heard. And so if you go to Facebook and you go to Responsibility Advocates, um, it'll, it'll pull right up. And then right below that, you'll see each of the the videos that we shot and so in all the interviews as well as you can go to the website which is also responsibilityadvocates.com but the Facebook page is the easiest and so everybody pretty much does that so once you see it we want everybody in the parish to be able to view these as well because we have a passion for educating people and political responsibility is one of those things that is on our radar as well and so we want everybody in this parish to make an informed decision on who they're voting for and why they're voting for them, as well as we want everybody in this parish, first of all, to vote, right? So sometimes when they see a candidate that they really like, it'll, and it'll make them want to get to the, the, the polls and, and, and go vote. So please, as soon as you watch these, pass these on to all the friends that you know and, and all of the people in your, your Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, this time I'm going to ask Bobby Schroeder to come up. Bobby Schroeder is representing Leadership St. Bernard as part of the committee. Uh, the committee that came up with these questions and put on the forms was a combination of the St. Bernard Chamber, Leadership St. Bernard, and Responsibility Advocates. So, Mr. Bobby. Good evening. The general election will be held, as all of you all should know by now, on November 21st of 2015. To register, view ballots, or find polling locations, please visit www.sos. Dot LA dot GOV. This is a reminder that the St. Bernard Chamber of Commerce does not endorse any candidate for elected office. The purpose of this forum is strictly educational. 
We believe it is important for the business community and the public to have the opportunity to hear and learn more about candidates running for elected office. Please note these questions were prepared by a committee of the St. Bernard Chamber of Commerce, Leadership St. Bernard, and the responsibility advocates represented by Matt Woodward of The Gathering and Henry Ballard Jr. of Christian Fellowship. No candidate has had the opportunity to review these questions ahead of time. During the forum, the candidates may request for a question to be repeated. Candidates may not, however, request for further elaboration or interpretation of the question. Candidates should do their best to answer the questions as presented by the moderators. Questions will not be taken from the audience. Please note that for this forum, we have adjusted the format to allow more control and more discretion to be used by the moderator. Where appropriate, the moderator will allow 45 second rebuttals. Candidates will be mindful of the timekeepers and will end promptly when his or her time to speak has ended. Candidates will be respectful of their opponents and refrain from any interruptions. Additionally, the audience will be respectful of all candidates and will refrain from any form of interruption and please turn off all cell phones at this time. We'd like to thank the following, St. Bernard Parish Government, Roxanne Adams, Clerk of Council, and Ryan Fink, Director of Film and Television. And with that, we shall begin. Okay, the first uh, Council A, uh, District A, we're going to start with uh, the candidates in alphabetical order, Mr. Gillis McCloskey, Mr. Mike Pichon, and Mr. Peter Rupp. Um, the candidates will be asked a total of three questions and then allowed a closing statement. The three questions. Uh, Question responses will be a minute and a half long with a 45 second rebuttal allotted at the discretion of the moderator. And the closing statement will be a minute and a half long. We'll now have the first question. You will each have 90 seconds to respond and a rebuttal period of 45 seconds will be granted as seen fit. Question one. Old Araby has had great momentum with the continued development, proposed beautification projects, and civic engagement. How do you plan to leverage that progress to improve other portions of the district. And Mr. Rupp will have your response first. <clears throat> the answer to rebuilding St. Bernard Parish economically, including District A, is to rebuild it socially. The expression goes, you go after what you need and what you want will come. In order to attract business and residents back to St. Bernard Parish, people must want to live and do business here first. So in short order, what do we need? And while this doesn't pertain strictly to District A, another high school. Because no matter how nice and shiny the one we have, there are just too many cultures imposing themselves on each other daily. And while we are at it, stop allowing students from coming in from New Orleans to attend the parish schools. We need to restore more financial faith to the residents of the parish. One way is such to make St. Bernard Parish Fire Department in charge of their own funds, thus removing the fire department as a bargaining chip for future councils to obtain millages by means of threatening layoffs. We will no doubt be asking residents to renew desperately needed, desperately needed millages. And if we, want, if we want something from you, we sure as hell better do some, or put something on the table. Our focus, should, financially and otherwise, should be on the people who currently live in the district, not to whom we're trying to attract. But furthermore, to release distress, restore the peace, should be the great aim that we have in focus. When we accomplish those things, all the rest will fall into place. Thank you. I have a comment about that. Well, Mr. Peschel, and your response is actually next. Oh, I, I understand. No, but as a rebuttal statement to uh, what uh, Mr. Rupp said. Okay, we're going to allow the uh, candidates to get their 90-second responses first, and then the rebuttal period will begin after that. Oh, okay, great. Uh, thank you. If, uh, if I'm fortunate enough to get elected, uh, I see Old Araby as the catalyst for everything that's going on in St. Bernard Parish right now. The, the energy that is coming out of there has gone across Judge Perez and into uh, New Araby, if you want, into St. Claude Heights. The builders are coming there. What we need to get back are people. I think Mr. Rupp said socially, I think I would term that we need to get the people back. We still are down 25 or 30,000 people from what we had before the storm. If we can get those people building, and moving into homes in there, then business will follow. Then all of those things that we miss will come. It's, uh, 
Also, our, our community parks, we lack some, some identity now as far as what's going on in, in the parish, particularly in District A. We have four parks that are basically dormant, and all of the ball, the ball parks, uh, ball fields rather, are down the road uh, at Valrees Park, and uh, we need to move towards putting those parks back in service so each of those smaller communities will get a sense of identity. Carolyn Park has a wonderful facility or had a wonderful facility and has the beginnings of, of making something happen. Uh, Community Park has a park that is also there in Vista Park. We, we have four of them, Patricia Park, and, uh, and nothing's happening there. And people are asking me, can we put those back in the service? Can you have those turned into walkway, uh, walking parks? Thank you. And Mr. McCloskey. Thank you. <clears throat> I think um, Old Araby is a very leverageable asset. And um, as I understand it, we still have $2 million to spend left over from the CDG, CDBG grant fund. Um, and we, I think it's important that we put that money into a riverfront project that creates another asset uh, in Old Araby. And um, as I understand it, the com that doesn't cover what we would really like to do, which we would really like to put some commercial property along that riverfront to make it truly something that draws people to our area. We need to direct St. Bernard. Uh, we need to direct the progress that's happened in Old Araby into other parts of our parish. I think one of the most important programs we have right now is the Builder Bundle Package. We need to support that Builder Bundle Package. Um, I know our water system is being repaired right now, but only 35% of the pipes are currently scheduled to be fixed under the, uh, the loans that we've taken out. Uh, I think we need to find additional grant money or um, a, there is some additional money left over in the, uh, the, the water rate increases to strategically place water pipes within our Builder Bundles that will give us the most return on our investment. And what that does is it takes down a block for investment. So um, in sales, essentially people want to buy, you know. So you have to find ways to, to, to get around what their objections might be. And um, the Build a Bundle packages are an important asset. It's, it's the impetus for growth in our district. And we need to be strategic about directing the success we've had in Old Araby into the other areas of our district and focus on our Builder Bundles and support our realtors and, um, and builders. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rupp, at this time, you will have 45 seconds of rebuttal. <clears throat> My rebuttal is both for Mr. Pichon and Mr. McCluskey. Mr. McCluskey actually supported Mr. Loga's championed uh, proposal for the water increase twice, both an interview to WDSU and an interview to NOLA.com. Um, this was supported before the, uh, the independent study came back. In the, in the first forum that we had, Mr. Pichon did not support bringing the parks back, but actually meant to mention making them into dog parks. Um, I think that what we have is, we have a structure that is set out there, the way things are bid and the way things are, are done, that uh, he did, he mentioned the build a bundle, but the CBDG money, remember, we're about to inherit almost $7 million of BP funds. Thank you. Mr. Pashon. Yes, I have uh, one comment about Mr. Rupp's statement about building another high school. I think we just can't say stuff up here. Uh, it has to have some basis in reality. Shamet High School is going to cost $100 million when it's finished. Now, for St. Bernard Parish Schools, Ms. Doris Boche would have a whole lot to say about what's going on here. But uh, for us to build a second high school, who's going to want to send their kid to the $20 million school? You want to not have music, not have sports, not have any academics, anything, or excuse me, not have anything except ap academics. It, it's not possible. Uh, also, the parks. What I said was put the parks back into commerce. I do not support putting park ball back. It isn't going to happen. They spent millions of dollars putting those two parks together. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McCloskey. So um, to address the issues, I think um, I absolutely did support the Waterline Loan Project because we had no other alternative in St. Bernard Parish. We do live on an infrastructure that's built for 70,000 and we have 46,000 residents. We have to understand that simple business math dictates that need an increase in wages. Unfortunately, that is our situation in St. Bernard Parish. And the water line, uh, the, the amoeba, is one of the things that's blocking uh, development in St. Bernard Parish. 
Uh, if we continue to allow the, the media to dictate our image for St. Bernard Parish, then we're not going to see uh, people come down here and, and, and purchase homes and, and support the builder bundles and support um, the new prospect homes that are being built in St. Bernard. It's crucially important that we increase our population in St. Bernard Parish, and that is one of the blocks. Thank you. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next question. Last year, St. Bernard Parish residents voted down 10 tax renewals for services that included libraries, fire protection, recreation, road maintenance, and the Council on Aging. What steps would you take as an elected official to help ensure residents are educated on issues and have confidence in parish government when important millages are being proposed? And Mr. Pesci, on this time, we'll start with you. All righty, thank you. Uh, first of all, I think we have to restore confidence in the government. Uh, the reason partly, I think, that people voted down and just voted no for everything was that people don't have faith in the government right now. We have had time and time again where our, our current administration has gotten in trouble with, with funds being available and being taken. And to my understanding, no one has been prosecuted for any of that yet. And it hasn't, to my knowledge, been fixed. So first of all, the people don't trust us. Or excuse me, not me, but the, to the current administration. Uh, and we have to correct that. Secondly, I think, again, we do, as Mr. McCluskey said, we live, we're trying to maintain a 70,000 person infrastructure of everything. And, and we can't do that. We are, we are going to have to raise some taxes, but we're going to have to t let our people know that this is what it's for and we're going to take care of it. We have to ensure that they understand that there are efficiencies happening within the government, that we cannot just ask them to raise 10 different taxes or roll over 10 different millages and, and expect everyone to just go along with it. Individually, those millages made sense, but I believe even one of them uh, that, was, that ran by itself failed. Uh, and again, I go back to the fact that the people just simply do not trust the government in St. Bernard Parish right now to wisely spend their money. Thank you. Mr. McCloskey. Well, I do agree with Mr. Pichon that it was a vote of no confidence. Um, I think the residents of St. Bernard Parish were concerned that their money wasn't being spent intelligently. Um, and lack of information is the primary way we can combat that. But I think it's also important to note the majority of the millages that were shot down were not new taxes, they were renewals. And uh, I'm glad you asked this question because we have an important renewal that's up, for, up on this ballot. Um, the Council on Aging is a great example of a millage that has been in place since the 1990s and was voted down this last fall. This millage funds programs that are important to our senior citizens, hot meals, like hot meals, transportation, exercise programs, medical assistance, and social interaction. We hope that the voters elect officials they can trust, but let's make sure that the public is informed on these millages by putting ads in the paper, on social media, directly to our neighborhood associations and in town hall meetings. Now let's continue to fund a program that does so much for our senior citizens. Thank you. Mr. Rupp. <clears throat> we, are, we, we are approaching a seven to eight million dollar budget shortfall. The problem is easily identified. We have an extremely top heavy white collar workforce and a very thin and stressed blue collar workforce. As a result of this, public services are suffering. Things such as trimming trees, cutting grass, replacing street lights, and trash pickup, they're all suffering. We begin with positions created as a result of Hurricane Katrina, which are no longer needed, or could use far less employees. Unfortunately, they were never intended to last this long, but did, and when they were used as means of employing personal friends. And soon, we are going to ask residents to renew millages, already in place for the continuation of services. We need to be willing to cut our own fat if we want to gain your trust. The bottom line is smaller government means less moving parts, which means more efficiency. And less, and less moving parts means it's easier to fix. At the end of the day, cutting the budget does not always mean firing people or cutting services. What it means is reallocating funds, placing people in positions that they can actually succeed in, and the residents will reap the benefits based on that. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll allow 45 seconds of rebuttal for their responses, and we'll start with Mr. Peshawn. I don't have any rebuttal to okay. what, what was said. I agree pretty much with what both of, both of the gentlemen said. I have a rebuttal. Okay. Um, Mr. McCloskey. So we're actually not facing a seven to eight million dollar revenue debt shortage. We're actually facing a 2.5 million dollar shortage, and, and the majority of uh, that shortage comes from uh, falling oil and gas prices. 
and uh, not only are surrounding parishes and our state facing the same shortage, um, they actually are coming up with some ways to do that. I do work with a multi-million dollar budget, and I promise you that every single, all yeah, the devil is in the details. When the, the, a lot of things can be done by trimmings, uh, trimming a little bit off of each, each project, and a lot of things can be done by renegotiating vendor contracts. And uh, we also need to reestablish our grants department, because the grants department not only funds projects, but it also funds salaries. Some of the salaries in our government are funded through grants right now. They do not come out of the taxpayers' money. Thank you. Mr. Rupp. <clears throat> Mr. McCluskey, you mentioned that the amoeba is, uh, it exists, but the truth is that if you look hard enough, you'll find an amoeba or disease anywhere. You'll find these things. Um, I think it's important to know that the current administration, regardless of how demonstrative it might be, they have gotten the, this thing under control uh, through, through a god-awful process. Um, I think that your focus in marketing and, and, and spending more money on, on, on projects, putting things in paper, in newspaper, awareness, we do these things. We currently do these things, and it's, it's proven that they, they work, but they work on a very minimal level. Do I get another rebuttal? Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rupp, your points are inaccurate. Uh, in fact, we're going to move on to the third <laughs> question right now. Um, in a few brief words, what do you believe is the purpose of government? And Mr. McCloskey, we'll start with you this time. I think the purpose of government is simple. It's, it's a, we live in a representative government. Rep the, the purpose of government is to represent the constituents within our district, our parish, our state, our, 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 our country. That's what, that's what we are here to do. And our, our responsible represent, representative knows how to reach out to government, create layers of management within their particular uh, area, and, and, and listen. I mean, the most important thing that you learn as a salesman, a lot of people think that salesmen just talk. That is not the case. The most important skill set you learn in sales is how to listen. And I've been knocking doors and meeting the residents of District A and listening to what their concerns are. And, and they're different in every area because we do have areas that face different problems. In Old Araby, you do not have a population density issue. However, in Carolyn Park, in St. Claude Heights, in Buccaneer Villa, we do have a population density issue. And we have a supply and demand issue. And you need to be astute. And in, in Chalmette Vista, there's a whole, that is an amazing, thriving community with a neighborhood association that since reapportionment's just gotten forgotten. You know, and it, it's, it's incredible the assets that they have in Chalmette Vista. And they just need a little lift. So I think the most important thing government can do is represent and listen. Thank you. Mr. Rupp. Aside from our water issues and our legal problems, I think the, the primary job for government is to boost morale. The largest, prob largest problem in St. Bernard Parish is the morale of the people. We must stop trying to market and sell our way out of our problems. Our brand is currently broken, and no one wants to buy into something that doesn't work. People are not envy of us, envy is a, envious of us anymore. And if we, want to, if we want the businesses and amenities that other parishes have, we must show people that we can live as good, if not better, than they do. We do this by allocating and focusing our resources on our people. We make, our lives we make their lives better and easier, which in return will boost their morale. We begin with an addition of another high school, which we can put at, Saint, at, the Saint, at Seoul St. Bernard High School location, switch that school out to another. Uh, we make more convenient and less crowded recreation facilities, rep replacing crowded medians, such as that right over there in Buccaneerville North, street lights and high grass, most of which can be addressed by doing away with white collar heavy workforce and restoring the balance to public services, not by firing people, but by moving people into positions they can actually do. The new council will inherit an estimated $7 million deficit, which is true. If we cut the $1.7 million over four years annually, we will have a balanced budget, a very obtainable goal. Thank you. And Mr. Pesho. All right. Uh, the purpose of, of government is to represent the will of the people. Its uh, two big functions are to protect them and to make them feel safe. That's what government's supposed to do for us. It's also supposed to make their lives easier by providing them with services. Uh, and on this first couple of issues, we, I believe that our sheriff's department does a wonderful job in keeping our people safe. 
uh, I think most of the folks in District A and in St. Bernard Parish feel that, our, that we are safe. So that is a fundamental thing that, that goes along with being represented, uh, or excuse me, of being a part of the government. Uh, making their lives easier. I believe Mr. Rupp has hit it on the head and when he says that our brand may be broken. Our, our trust in our government is broken. I think that the tools or the, the ability to fix that is not something that, I think we need to change the leadership. Uh, to just cut to the chase. We need to cut the, to change the leadership of what's going on in St. Bernard Parish and to provide the people with what they want. Sometimes I wonder if, if they're listening at all. And uh, the opportunity for the community groups to rise up and talk to the parish and let them know what's, what's going on and what they're thinking and what they want is something that I'm behind. Okay, I believe that in each of our communities, Carolyn Park, uh, Patricia Park and Old Araby and Buckinerville and North and South and Vista, we need to have community groups that will lead the way on what they want. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Mr. McCloskey, you will now be given 45 seconds for a rebuttal. We need to direct growth and drive demand in District A. And as far as the ban, the the brand being broken, we're not actively managing our brand in St. Bernard Parish. And is in order to create growth in St. Bernard Parish, we need to focus on a few things. Number one being, we need to reduce the supply of uh, our, our LLT lots that go into commerce. That's one way to drive up the demand. Another way is to market our amenities and counteract the negative press that hits the 6 o'clock news. Um, our, I agree, our Sheriff's Department is doing a fantastic job. We're one of the safest communities in the, in, in the area. And the, the problem is people do not know about the great things that happen in St. Bernard Parish. What they know about is what they see on the 6 o'clock news because there's no other message coming out. We have great schools, we have a safe community, and we have wonderful people who live in, in, in St. Bernard and in District A. Thank you. Mr. Rupp. Rebuttal. 45 seconds at your discretion. <laughs> We've heard from both Mr. Pichon and Mr. McCluskey numerous times is the words, Old Araby. Now, I'm an advocate for Old Araby just as much as they are. You know, I tried to institute a certain uh, program, which whether, the, whether that program works with the overlays or not, is still, still, the jury is still out on that. But by his own admission, we've, seen, we've heard Mr. McCluskey talk about how much of a salesman he is. So how much of that salesman is coming out right now at this forum to sell himself to you when in fact, He's not nearly as good as he says he is. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Peshawn will uh, entertain your rebuttal. All right, that was exciting. Okay. Uh, I, I believe I heard Mr. McCluskey say he would limit the, the number of LLT lots that he would put into circulation. Did I hear you correctly, sir? That is correct. Okay. I, I don't believe that's what we need to do. We need to put those bundles together and push them out there and with, with some sort of agreement made by the builders that they're going to use them, that we're not going to sit on them for the next 20 years. People need to know that they can build in St. Bernard Parish. I, I would almost be an advocate to give them away if a builder would make some sort of an agreement that he would build on that lot almost immediately or within a reasonable amount of time. And, and as for Mr. Rupp, I have, to, I have to ask you, sir, you know, we talk about Old Araby because Old Araby does stuff. Okay. Where have you been in Carolyn Park, would be what I would ask you. And what are you doing with those folks? OK. Thank you. Nice. Uh, we'll now have your closing statements. You will have a minute and a half each. And Mr. Rupp, we'll start with your closing statement. <clears throat> Four years ago, 50% of District A voted against Councilman Loga. Now, District A is being tricked into voting for one of his successors. Mr. Logan and an old Arabian neighborhood association has given you Mr. Pichon. You can't Google Mr. Pichon's name without the name or picture of Mr. Logan popping up 50% of the time in all the same articles. Is this a coincidence? Then there's Mr. McCluskey with ties to both Ray Logan and Dave Peralta. Mr. McCluskey has hosted, camp has hosted campaign fundraisers for Mr. Peralta and Peralta has hired several of McCluskey's friends to pop top paying jobs. Gillis McCluskey has also received campaign fund donations from Dave Peralta's campaign, as well as receiving donations from several Councilman Loga's top contributors. If you follow the money, you can connect to candidates. 
Every four, every four years, politicians who are squandering your money find a way to prolong their control by inserting a popular face to whom which they can control. And because of this, District A is now in a three-way three -way political popularity contest. It, the, the fact remains that I am the only candidate on this dais that has fought political corruption and derelict leadership over the last four years. And just as my opponents do, I am also a part of a nonprofit, the Bayou Buccaneers for Education and Awareness. But it's easy to fall into low-risk, high-reward accomplishments. What sets me apart from my running mates is the battles I fought against the grain. Because in the words of famous author Edmund Burke, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Thank you, Mr. Rupp. Mr. Pesh, on your closing statement. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I, I am not a politician. This is my, even though I'm sitting up here, this is likely my first, or this is my first and likely my last race. Uh, if I'm fortunate enough to win, I will leave teaching and work for you full time in District A. My two opponents can't say that. The Marines teach you to work as part of a team, that the team is more important than you and that your integrity is everything. If you are a leader, you don't get put in the back of a police car for committing foolish, dangerous acts like assault or shooting a, a gun at your neighbor's dogs in your own neighborhood. And you certainly don't get arrested for those things. You lead by example. I can promise you that I have never been arrested or even sat in the back seat of a police car. I th and I thought about that. I think I am the best choice for you because I have had success working as a Marine officer and as a teacher while working at the same time in my community. I know how to tie the two together. I would like to take my energy and success and apply it to all of District A. That means following through with the overlay, ensuring that we have clean drinking water throughout the district, putting our community parks back in the hands of our residents, and bringing our people home by marketing the builders and former residents to move to St. Bernard. Thanks to the Chamber for allowing us the opportunity to uh, present our views tonight, and thanks to my family for supporting me in this adventure. Thank you. Mr. McCloskey, your closing statement. Yeah, I'd like to clarify a couple facts. Number one, I've never hosted any type of fundraiser at my house for any candidate ever. Um, what I did host was a meet and greet, which Mr. Ruff actually attended. Um, also, <laughs> what, uh, because, and the reason I do that is because I think it's important for the voters to make an informed decision. Um, and as to uh, Mr. P. Sean's statement about uh, that he's going to retire, I don't think you'll find anybody on this dais that has a higher motive than me. Anybody that asks any, anybody that asks any question about me, they'll tell you that I drive hard and I work hard. I am a hardworking man, and I will do things for this district. Also, um, I've never been arrested for anything more than a park, more than a traffic violation. Well, I'm sorry. Let me restate that. I've never been convicted of anything more than a park, uh, a traffic violation. So the the slanderous flyer that you put out is absolutely ridiculous. Also, I believe that's not the things that we need to focus on in District A. I'm not going to spend time digging up dirt or uh, fabricating dirt on, on my political opponents because I don't think that's what we need right now. <laughs> However. It was not an easy decision to place my family under the microscope that is the political arena. Nonetheless, my wife and I now chose to do so because I believe my positive energy and business experience is exactly what District A needs right now. There are opportunities in front of us right now that need to be leveraged and our message needs to be profound and concise. We have incredible amenities in District A, such as great schools, a great sheriff's department, a beautiful new hospital, and a great community with residents that care. To reiterate my goals, I truly believe that District A is the catalyst for positive growth in St. Bernard Parish. It will take proven leadership, hard work, community activism, and an aggressive marketing strategy to reach our goals. My name is Gillis McCluskey, you, and I'm running for council in District A. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your candidates for council District A. Uh, at this time, if we can have our candidates for District C make their way to the uh, front, please. That was fun. <laughs> uh oh. We dropped the water. Oh, thank you. I do need something, but we don't need this paperwork anymore. <laughs>
if we could have the candidates for District C runoff, come, please come up to the front. Uh, alphabetical order, left to right. Okay, if we could, uh, we could have your attention, we're going to start the, uh, the forum for District C, our runoff. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please find your seats, we're going to get started with District C. If you could please find your seats. Okay. Everyone, if you could please find your seats, we'll get started with the, uh, the next runoff. Uh, St. Bernard Parish Council District C runoff between uh, candidates Howard Luna and Cindy Meyer. Candidates will be asked a total of three questions and then allowed a closing statement. The three responses will be a minute and a half long with a 45 second rebuttal allotted at the discretion of the moderator. And that the closing statement will be a minute and a half long. 
We will now have the first question. You'll each have 90 seconds to respond, and a rebuttal period of 45 seconds will be granted as seen fit. And I would like to remind the audience to please hold your applause, cheers, and jeers throughout the, um, the forum. Uh, question one. As an elected official, what role do you feel civic involvement plays in serving our constituents? And I'll start with Ms. Meyer. I believe deeply and passionately in civic involvement as I have over, I've had a business and been involved in St. Bernard Parish since I'm 26 years old. I've been a volunteer in many civic organizations. I've, I've owned and operated and started two businesses. And the relationships that you build upon being involved in the civic organizations is essential for the community and for St. Bernard Parish. Those relationships are invaluable and it allows you to be able to work, with, to work together and to work as a team to get things done to the be, for the betterment of St. Bernard. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Luna. Thank you. Um, y y you know, the, uh, the definition of being civic minded has a lot of, everybody plays a different role in that. Whether it means that you actually will, will volunteer to do community work, whether it's a playground or a park or cleaning up or planting trees, that's just one part of being a civic, good-minded civic citizen. The other part of it is just representing St. Bernard well outside of the community. That means that when you're traveling or you, you have friends out there that, you know, you represent a positive impact on it. It also means that uh, you do, you do uh, what you need to do in the community. That means your houses look presentable, the lawns are cut so that you have respect for the community and your neighbors. So being, being civic-minded and doing civic things has a much broader definition than just volunteering. Um, I know from my perspective, um, I've been on a lot of civic organizations, a lot of nonprofits in the parish uh, that contribute a lot to improving um, the quality of life here. So um, again, being civic goes beyond just volunteering and showing up and owning a business. It actually goes into what you do outside of the parish, how you represent us, what you tell people about us, and how you actually act. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Meyer, at this time, you'll be allowed 45 seconds for a rebuttal. Whereas I agree, being involved outside of the community to have a good image will draw and, and make a positive impact on St. Bernard, but first we have to start here. We have to start here with our community and our residents and being involved in local organizations and local civic, um, local civic organizations, volunteer work uh, like the Special Olympics, um, the, the parks, the communities, the schools. All of that plays a vital role in our community and our relationship building to make St. Bernard positive and move forward. Thank you. Mr. Luna? I, I, 45 could, seconds. I couldn't agree any. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more with Ms. Myers. I absolutely believe that um, giving back to the community is a big part of being civic-minded. Um, and again, whether it's you doing things within District C or you doing things around the parish, I mean, it, it all comes back to um, being proud of where you're from, um, being a part of what you do. Uh, having a stake in the future of the community. And, and I absolutely agree with her that it starts here. But it also is important that we project that same image and that same feeling outside of the parish so that others feel that way as well about us. Thank you. Okay. Second question. If elected, what would success look like for your district after four years? And Mr. Luna, we'll start with you. Um, you know, it... it it's amazing how um, people get into these offices and, and I gave a candidate who had actually won last time some advice and I said the worst thing that you could actually have or happen to you is wake up four years from now in a re-election and look back and say what the hell have I actually done? Right? So I think the most important thing in order to, shoot, to be successful in order to I guess to identify your success as in the office is the ability to touch something you've improved. And that means to be able to go out and see and touch and do things that actually are better off than they were four years ago. So it's kind of like you, you look at it in, at a uh, snapshot of time and you say, you know what, we've done some things together. We've done some tangible things together. We've not just said, you know what, I've balanced the budget. 
because I can't touch a budget in the field, and I can't show people what a budget looks like. So I think having the ability to touch things, having tangible improvements in the community that you can share with everyone is, is paramount to being successful. Thank you. Ms. Meyer. District C has wonderful school system, the library. We have a very safe community. What else do we need? We need residents. We need new construction. And we need new businesses. When I drive around in District C, I'm, I'm, there's no, I'm a pro-business candidate. Everyone knows that. So when I drive around every day in St. Bernard from A to B, I mean, meaning from point A to point B, when I see vacant buildings, vacant homes, empty lots that we, need, we should be developing to attract new residents, to attract a new image to St. Bernard, remember, people, businesses, all attract a new image for what we need. And that is what we need to move St. Bernard forward. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Luna, 45 seconds. Um, I, I believe that population is the key here. And I, and I honestly believe that in order for us to have a uh, dynamic and a uh, vibrant population, you're going to have to change the way we do things down here. And that means that we're going to have to make things look better down here. We're going to have to offer more things, more amenities to people to want to move here. I mean, we've, we've, got the, we've got great schools. We've got a lot of great things going for us. We've got affordable land, but what we don't have is residents, right? And the businesses down here, um, particularly the small businesses, their future depends upon how many people live here, how many people move here. If we don't do that, then they're all chasing the same dollar. And, and so, again, my, my point is you have to improve some things, you have to get the population up, and that's the success of St. Bernard Parish. Thank you. Ms. Meyer. And in order to do that, I'll give you a very clear and concise answer. We need to restore integrity in parish government and restore faith. You have to build upon the foundation, and you have to have the leadership skills and the teamwork and the initiative to be able to get that done. Thank you. Okay, question three. Many residents feel that St. Bernard is behind the times by not having a recycling program. Would you support a recycling program for St. Bernard Parish? And if so, how would you propose to fund it? And Ms. Meyer, will we begin with you? I would definitely propose to have a recycling program. However, it would be up to, I would have a town hall meeting. It would be up to my constituents. It would be up to working with your other counterparts in St. Bernard, the government administration, to determine the best avenue for that to happen and where that funding may come from. That's not my decision to make. I am for it, but it would need, would need to do some research and some not get some knowledge and gain some education to better make that decision. Okay. Mr. Luna? I think that a recycling program sounds good on paper. And you know what? Everybody wants to do what's green today. But the fact remains is I'm not quite sure if you can find a community out there that has a self-sustaining recycling program. And so that means it's going to cost you to do it. Is it a good thing to do? Absolutely. Is it something that we should make a decision on as a council member? No. I think the residents need to decide because at the end of the day, they're going to have to foot the bill for this. So am I open to, uh, to recycling? Absolutely. Can we do it in some limited fashion? Sure we can. Can we do it in certain areas in the parish? No, we can't. It has to be almost an all, in, all or nothing in thing. But I do think we can take recycling in pieces. I'm not quite sure you can do curb recycling. Uh, very efficiently or, or do it in a way that the, the doesn't cost the residents any more money to do it. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll now have your closing statements. You will each have a minute and a half, and Mr. Luna will begin with you. Thank you. Um, you know, I've been here before, right? Four years ago, I was in the same spot. I was in a runoff with Mr. Lewis, and unfortunately, I came short then. But, you know, a lot of people would have just said, why did you get back up? All right? I decided to get back up and jump on the horse again. So I stayed, and I spent a lot of time in compliance talking about noncompliance issues in the neighborhoods. It's not a popular thing to do. I'm not quite sure a lot of people liked it. It probably cost me a lot of votes this time around, but it was the right thing to do. You know, I got involved with the parks. I got involved with doing things in the community with pocket parks and things like that to make the community better. 
I got, in part, I got involved in the master land use plan because that's what made sense for this community. That's where the future of this community is. And I did that not because of a candidate's pledge to you. I did it because I promised you that I would do that. And I did it, right? Outside the political office, outside of the council, I did it on my own with a lot of help from a lot of people. So this is what I'm going to promise you tonight, right? I'll never do anything to compromise the trust that you have in me. I just won't do it. It's not in my blood. I'm a Boy Scout when it comes to certain things. People know that. Ask anybody in the compliance office and they'll tell you that. I'll promise that when, things are, when you need to, to have a vote on something like the water bill increase, I promise you that I'll vote for you to have a water bill to, to vote on that. I promise you that the millages will come out in enough time so that you'll have an opportunity to look at them. You'll have, a lot of, you'll have a lot of opportunity for us to discuss them. And when they come on the ballot, you can understand what we're doing. I promise that the agenda from the councils will come complete so that you understand what's going on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Luna. Ms. Meyer, your closing statement. Thank you. My resume is based upon my civic and business accomplishments, not political offices I've held or run for. I'm not a career politician. My goal is to accomplish the objectives that will make St. Bernard's political environment a model for business success. The citizens who depend on our government services. This campaign is about the people, not about political ambitions or pensions. The people deserve a government that is reflective of them and represents their best interest. As a board member and most recently chairwoman of the Chamber of Commerce, I've worked diligently to bring new businesses to our parish and strive to help new ideas for business retention. Moving forward, our parish government has to be more user-friendly and careful not to over-regulate and thus discourage business opportunity. Public officials have to do all that we can to encourage new businesses and stimulate that entrepreneurial spirit. Retailers provide the valuable neighborhood business services our citizens appreciate. They also provide jobs, sales taxes, and a better quality of life for our patrons. As councilperson, I will continue these efforts and also work closely with re realtors and other business professionals to improve our new home inventory. New construction creates jobs, sales, and a better standard of living. This is a major economic development, and it's almost instantaneous. Let me help this new council and administration bring true economic development to St. Bernard. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, your candidates for District C, Howard Luna and Semi Meyer. Could we please have the candidates for District D start making your way up to the dais? Thank you.
Okay, at this time, if you could please find your seats, we'll get started with our uh, runoff for the Council District, District D. Okay, if we can have your attention, we'll get started with Council District, District D. Okay, our candidates for uh, District D are Ms. Wanda Ansardi Alcon and Kenneth Zuli Sr. Candidates will be asked a total of three questions and then allowed a closing statement. The three question responses will be a minute and a half long with a 45 second rebuttal allotted at the discretion of the moderator. And the closing statement will be a minute and a half long. We'll now have the first question. You will each have 90 seconds to respond, and a rebuttal period of 45 seconds will be granted as seen fit. Question one. Despite the success and vibrant activity surrounding Val Rees Park as a destination recreation complex, many have complained about the loss of neighborhood parks and recreation. What are your thoughts regarding the redevelopment of neighborhood-based recreational activities, parks, and booster clubs? And Ms. Alcon, we'll start with you. Um, as I understand it, the present uh, person in charge tried to have a meeting to encourage the separation of the parks to go back to like we had years ago, Rebel, Vista, and Bournemouth Parks, Kenilworth, and um, six people showed up at the meeting beside the, uh, I think it was Mr. DeHarty that tried holding the meeting. So I don't think the people are that interested in creating the separation. I spoke to a couple of people, one in um, Deer Creek, who told me that she enjoyed everything being close by. She didn't have to run from Araby to Kenilworth to bring her, her children to play. And I know like I had three sons and we were, some of us, we were in Araby or we were in Bournemouth or we were at Versailles trying to play ball and trying to be in three places at one time. So I think some of the people enjoy that. I think with the amount of money that was spent to create that park and that facility, it's one of the best in the country. P children come from everywhere to play in those parks. Um, that it's not going to change. I think they're going to stay local. But I think if the people show at meetings and such that they do want to create this, then I'm sure the council and administration would try to uh, help them out. Thank you. Mr. Zuli. Can you repeat your question? Despite the success and vibrant activity surrounding Val Rees Park as a destination recreation complex, many have complained about the loss of neighborhood parks and recreation. What are your thoughts regarding the redevelopment of neighborhood-based recreational activities, parks, and booster clubs? First of all, um, I grew up in St. Bernard Parish, and I, I was fortunate to work, I mean, uh, to play for the parks, uh, recreational parks. I think it's very important to try to get that back here because in, in the communities, it brings the people in that community together. Um, I play baseball, basketball, and football for recreation. It's very important to bring that back. I'm for that. I'm encouraging that. Uh, the, the amount of people that uh, I spoke to uh, is far. Um, it's it's going to come down to can we you know, reignite and get the money to reignite the parks. That's going to be you know, what we think is going to happen. You have to find the money, the funds, the, you know, the electricity. Who's going to pay for that? It's us, the taxpayers. So I would love to have the parks back um, and not have it all at one. It, w it was the greatest thing in the world to live in St. Bernard Parish and play for Rebel, Vista, Bournemouth, Patricia Park, community. It, it was the greatest thing for me. I enjoyed it. I think it's important to move forward. Um, we had Kenilworth. I mean, it was, a great, it was great. I think we should try to get it back and try to find the funds. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Alcon, at this time we'll allow a 45 second rebuttal. Okay, um, I think the parks are a great idea. They were, they were prosperous before, but right now I don't think we have the population in each community to create those different parks. Now, if you want to start with two or three to, to begin, like they said, the funding would be very difficult. And having that beautiful facility in the back, I just, I just don't know that it would be 
you know, successful right now. Perhaps a little bit later on as more people come to St. Bernard and our, our residents get, you know, get more situated. Mr. Zuli. Uh, I'm okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. If St. Bernard Parish government were to receive a $250,000 grant for investment in your district, what project or projects would you prioritize or pursue as the best use of those funds? And Mr. Zuli, we'll start with you. Um, we, we were just recently at a, uh, at a uh, I was invited to a uh, meeting on a community uh, development program for uh, the Violet area. I would use it for that. I would try to get a community um, building and try to get the funds to be able to ignite that over in that area. Um, they action for it. Uh, you know, we need to look into that. That way all our communities can come together as one. Um, we're working real hard right now. Uh, Mr. Sylvester is uh, bringing the community leaders together, and I think it's going to uh, be an asset to District D. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Alcon? We were talking uh, about neighborhood parks. A $200,000 grant would help us situate those, get those parks established and um, set up with equipment for the children or whatever, as well as perhaps pay some of the utilities um, that would keep the park surviving. Um, there are several other things um, that draw the community together. Um, you know, the, the community parks, the um, uh, community center where people could come together and the children could, um, you know, could play or get, families could get together and do things. Um, also, possibly some um, sewage areas need to be, you know, some sewage needs to be done and handled. The water issues are a problem. I don't think that's enough money to handle the, uh, the water issues, but we have a, a lot of ways that money could be used in District D, and that's just a couple of what I'm thinking of. Okay, thank you. All right, now third question. Other than public safety and education, what one thing would you tout as a reason for new residents and businesses to relocate to St. Bernard? And we'll start with you, Ms. Alcon. We have great people. We have a great community. Um, we're striving to bring back our uh, positive image in St. Bernard. We want good government, and I think we're on our way to that with this, you know, with this election. Um, we have reasonable price, pricing on uh, property, and they're starting to build new houses. Uh, people can come in at the auctions and get property fairly cheaply to uh, you know, build a house and live here. Um, we have great organizations that, that work toward bringing people here. We have um, just um, a lot of, like I said, we have a good, a good amount of people that would help us um, convince others. We have to go out and be positive. We have to go out and, and work toward um, making a better image and, you know, that's all I have right now. Okay. Mr. Zuli. Can you repeat? Yes. Other than public safety and education, what one thing would you tout as a reason for new residents and businesses to relocate to St. Bernard? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, it's going to be very difficult right now. Um, I'm trying, as we speak, to talk to software companies to try to relocate and bring $100,000 jobs to St. Bernard Parish. Um, there's no secret. We have the land in District D and the businesses. We just recently had free rent in a building for over two years um, and finally got a dance studio in that area. Um, it's it's, it's going to come down to, you know, working together and bringing back the image of St. Bernard Parish. Uh, we, we, you know, the, the media destroyed us. And, uh, and I really feel that if we go out there and as Ms. Alcon said, you know, I agree with her, you know, it's the image, it's uh, bringing businesses over here, it's going to be hard. I think we can do it with the right, you know, people coming together, all the community leaders, the people talking positive about St. Bernard Parish, uh, the newspapers that are writing really good articles about the people and the businesses of St. Bernard Parish. I believe that I'm already doing it, and uh, that's what made me want to run for office. 
I loved the people in St. Bernard Parish. I reinvested my whole life back to St. Bernard Parish. And uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, District D can lose. I think Ms. Wanda is a beautiful person. We both care about St. Bernard Parish, and, and, and it's going to come up to the people that want to vote for whoever. I'm okay with whatever decision they make because we can't lose here. We both good people and we care about people in St. Bernard Parish. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll now have your closing statements. You each will have a minute and a half, and Mr. Zuli will have your closing statement first. Hi, my name's Kenny Zuli. I'm a candidate running for Councilman District D. I have over 25 years' experience in management. I'm the founder of the St. Bernard Parish Post weekly newspaper. My primary goal is to strive for the I'm sorry. My primary goal is to strive for a higher quality of life for the people of St. Bernard Parish. This motivated me, a common person like you, to brave politics and run for a council seat. I intend to help the people by focusing on insufficient and unproductive departments and programs. I'm not going to vote because they say. I'm going to vote because you say. I have the experience to do it right. I will be your megaphone. The council will hear our voice, and together we can make District D the best district in St. Bernard Parish. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Alcon, your closing statement. Thank you. I want to promote economic development and make District D a new business uh, center for uh, St. Bernard Parish. We have the areas, um, we have the property, and we have the, um, the chance to be able to bring every. We have the new Walmart coming in and other areas, and we need to bring more business to our area. We have the fast, one of the fastest growing areas in St. Bernard for young families. They're coming to Merrow. They want to be in Merrow. We need to give them more incentive by having more services and things for them to do. I want to hold meetings with the residents. We need to communicate. We need to know what each other is thinking. We need to know what needs to be done and how we can help you. We do represent you. I want to put re promote the reestablishment of our neighborhood parks because so many of us want it. The children need it. They need places to go and things to do. We need to do that. We need to work for a, a solution for safer water at better prices. I can be a full-time council person because I'm retired and I want to devote my time to helping District D continue its growth and to make more advances. We need to bring back our positive image and to do that, we will have to be transparent, and we will have to have accountability on the council. It's time for a change. The time is now. Uh, I, I'm on the Tourist Commission, as you all know. I'm chairman of the Tourist Commission. And the state logo is Pick Your Passion. I've picked my passion, and it's St. Bernard Parish and District D. And I hope you'll pick me as Thank your you, next council member. Thank Ms. you, Ms. OK, your candidates for District D, Mr. Kenny Zuli and Wanda Alcon. <laughs> At this time, I would like to invite the uh, candidates for St. Bernard at Large uh, East to please make your way up front. Uh, Council at Large member East. And we also have a brief announcement, if I can have your attention just a second. Um, <clears throat> we know, we know as, as so well there is many, much to do to wrap up the campaigns, and here's a suggestion. We know many signs and frames are saved and stored for your uh, next go-round, but if there are signs, yard stakes, wood frames, or extra flyers that you are done with, please recycle them. 
Um, nothing will be used in public or left out in the open, but we'd like to avoid everything going to the dump and landfill. Flyers and metal stakes can be recycled, wood frames can be reused by nonprofits and areas, and signs are reused during painting projects for nonprofits as well. If you'd like to donate your leftover campaign signs, uh, ground stakes, and wooden, please uh, contact the gathering at 264-5204 for more information. Thank you. Testing, one, two. Testing. Okay, if you could please find your seats again, we'll get started with uh, St. Bernard Parish Council at large position east. Please find your seats so that we can get started. <laughs> Wait, please hold your applause. <laughs> Quiet in the back. Quiet in the back. All right. Uh, this is the runoff for St. Bernard Parish Council at large east. Uh, we have the candidates Kerry Calais and Fred Everhart Jr. Candidates will be asked a total of three questions and allowed a closing statement. The three responses will be a minute and a half long with a 45 second rebuttal allotted at the discretion of the moderators. At the, end, at the closing statement will be a minute and a half long. We'll now have the first question. You will each have 90 seconds to respond. A rebuttal period of 45 seconds will be granted as seen fit. Question one. With the threat of large-scale diversions impacting major parts of our community, especially in the eastern part of St. Bernard Parish, what would you do to help mitigate the potential economic and cultural impact of these large-scale diversions? And Mr. Everhart, we'll start with you. Good question. Um, I've been involved with that for many years now. I was an advocate against freshwater diversions for four years. I started the, uh, the co my own little coalition when I was there with some residents from Plaquemines Parish. And we used to go to the Canova Freshwater Diversion and Agency meetings. I used to take the cool engineers out and trying to prove the negative impact to the, the legally, legally dumping of freshwater into our brackish water estuaries. And I was the only councilman at that time had in a public meeting had the Corps admit to 350,000 plus acres of land was lost to the poor operational procedures of a freshwater diversion. It goes a little bit further than that though. Freshwater, illegal dumping of freshwater in a brackish water, at water estuary goes against the Magnuson-Stevenson Act which protects brackish water vegetation and fisheries. Nobody really fights that. I fought the fight but when I left office it was just about pushed aside. So what they doing with these diversions is illegal in federal government eyes. And that's what we need to work on now. It's no more than a fisheries land on the issue. It's an illegal issue with a federal law that, that upholds it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Kelly. I don't believe that there's a bigger threat that uh, the eastern part of St. Bernard is facing than, uh, than these large-scale diversions. Uh, I've devoted... <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, thousands of hours over the last couple of years uh, to this issue. Uh, we have formed the Save Louisiana Coalition who has been at the forefront of uh, the fight against uh, the freshwater diversions that are proposed in the master plan. We've actually had 
some success and uh, we're, we're continuing to work to have continued that success. Uh, we've had the 250,000 CFS diversions that are proposed in the master plan have been reduced and there will be no diversions over 75,000 now. And we've actually been able to get the two lower diversions taken off the table completely as of recent. Um, this is a group that has been working hard and has made real, real progress in, in this issue. It's definitely something that needs to be taken further though and that's a big part of the reason that I decided to run for the council is to bring that voice uh, louder and, and to on the government end uh, as well. I've, I've gone to Washington, I've spent many days in Baton Rouge uh, advocating for this issue. And I think that we need to take a new approach than what we have been in the past. We need somebody who can get up there on a state level and represent our views intelligently and respectfully and bring a new, a new voice and a new uh, ideas to this fight so that we can actually make some progress and continue on the progress that we've made. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Next question. <clears throat> no rebuttal? Okay. Oh. I'm just, I apologize. I'm just yes. Curious. 45 seconds, <clears throat> Mr. Everhart. I apologize. No problem. What, can, what Ms. Calais is saying is correct, but the 35,000 35, CFS diversion is still going in Wills Point. And nothing has changed. <clears throat> I'm sorry I have sinus issues. The 35,000 CFS is still going in Wills Point. So I, I, I'm. I commend the, old, the coalition that they started. Actually, when they first started the coalition, they came to me, George came to me, and George Kavanagh and came to me, and I gave them a lot of information on where to go, on where I left off at when I was a councilman, which they, they pursued it in a good, a good ways. But I was the only councilman that sat in the Carnarvon Diversion Meeting and controlled it after it was the operational procedures at one time was always 6,000 CFS that didn't coincide with the landowners and the fisheries. I controlled it by resolutions in, on, on a parish level and the, the Plaquemines Parish level. Thank, thank you, Mr. Everhart. Ms. Cowling, you have a response? Yes. Um, I, the 250,000 CFS that was uh, initiated in, in 2012 under the council that uh, Mr. Everhart sat on, uh, has been reduced, so it definitely is an improvement. The 35,000 CFS is definitely still detrimental to our parish. It's definitely something that we need to continue to work on. But to say that it's not a, a drastic improvement to what we've had before is, is not correct. I mean, it's a huge step forward. It obviously still needs to be worked on, and it's something that will still be very detrimental to our parish. Um, I, I plan to continue that, and like I said, I, 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 a big part of my reason for being here is uh, to continue that fight on a governmental level. So thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, next question. Other than diversions, what two issues would you identify as being the most critical to St. Bernard Parish as a whole and why? Ms. Cal, I will start with you this time. Um, I think that there's a couple of things that are detrimental to St. Bernard right now. Um, one of the main things is uh, our, our lack of trust and our, our lack of faith in, in our government. Um, we, ha we need to rebuild that brand. We need to rebuild our image. We need to put people in parish government that will reflect the passion that our residents are showing, that reflect the, the momentum that our residents are building right now. I think that's a main issue that pe that's deterring people from coming to St. Bernard is the, the bad politics and the bad press that we get um, from, from parish government. Uh, the second thing I would like to see is an increase in tourism, especially in Eastern St. Bernard. Um, we have some of the best resources, natural resources, uh, in the state, and they're underutilized. Uh, I would like to see an attraction or, or a destination put in Eastern St. Bernard that will drive tourism and show people how, how important our coastal communities are. I think that would go a long way into bringing new residents and new businesses into St. Bernard, as well as making people realize that these communities deserve to be there and they deserve to be uh, saved. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Everhart. Read your question one more time, please. Yes, sir. Other than, other than diversions, what two issues would you identify as being the most critical to St. Bernard Parish as a whole and why? 
other than diversions, I would say bringing population back. In order for this parish to thrive, we have to bring population back. Big, big businesses will not come if they cannot thrive and, and sustain um, their order of making, making money, put it that way. And other than that, we need to make sure that we bring the misconception of parish government back again. We need to get the public trust back in parish government to where we can move forward as a whole and we can hold community, to community meetings like this and get people engaged in it so we can better each district, not just Lower St. Bernard, I'm talking IRB, District B, C, and D. We need to get, bring population back to them districts to where we can encourage big box corporations to come in here. So that would be my two concerns. Okay. Ms. Calais, do you have a rebuttal? No, I, I don't agree. Okay, thank you. And a third question. As Council at Large East, you represent the entire parish of St. Bernard. Having said that, what are your feelings regarding the zoning overlay proposals for the St. Claude Corridor and other key areas of the old Arabi community? And Mr. Everhart will have your response. I am actually for that. I, I believe that it would en enhance property values, the quality of life up there. We control some of the big corporations that want to come in. We, we could put process, we could put laws in place to where it controls that and makes it more of a community the community group or uh, residents up there. So I am, I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Caroline? Um, I agree. I think that uh, we need to make sure that we ensure that we keep the historical aspect of, of Araby. Uh, we don't want to lose our uh, identi identity by bringing in these new businesses or encouraging new businesses to come in, but I think that growth is, is very important. It's vital to that area. So I, I think that the overlays are, need to be looked at and made sure that they will not hinder any part of the old Araby, but I think they're a good step forward. Uh, we need to encourage the growth in that district, and uh, when, when we see good things happening, they need to, they need to be... Um, enhanced by government. They need to, government needs to give them the ability to make the most out of what's happening there. I think that's the role that government plays. And uh, I think government can ensure that people that are investing in Old Araby uh, have faith that they won't have a, a not ideal business next to them that will hinder their investment. Um, we need to make sure that we keep those balances and and allow that growth to continue and hopefully spread into the rest of the, uh, the districts. Okay, thank you. All right, we will now have your closing statements. You will each have a minute and a half, and Ms. Calais will begin with you. I want to thank you all for coming tonight, and I want to thank you for being involved in this process. I think that one of my main concerns is the lack of involvement in our, in our process of elections, and, and I think that people are discouraged, and uh, they're, they're tired of seeing the same things over and over again, and I understand that, but we have an opportunity in many of our elections uh, this time to get some new faces and some new leadership and some positive images of St. Bernard, and to really turn around the, the, the negatives that have been holding us back. I, I hope that y'all will spread the word and, and encourage your friends and family to get out and vote and to make your voices heard. I think it's important and I think it's critical to our future. I, I, wanna, I hope that I can earn your vote for this council at large seat. I think that I bring a whole parish perspective uh, to, the, to the race. Um, I, I look forward to working with the rest of the council and making St. Bernard the best that it can be. I think that we've had uh, uh, we've had in the past, you know, councils, uh, you know, my opponent has, has stressed his experience being on the council already. Um, I, I think that we've seen what that <coughs> brought us to, and I think you have a clear de decision. We can continue on the path that we've been on, or we can try something new and have a new future in a new face for St. Bernard. And that's what I'm bringing to the table. Thank you, Ms. Calais. All right, Mr. Everhart, your closing statement. Well, St. Bernard, we have a big decision to make in this upcoming election. We're going to elect leaders that's going to push this parish forward. I don't care. 
consider myself as a politician, never have. I've always been a public servant. If you knew me, when I sat down there in District E, I worked my butt off and I made sure that I protected the health, safety, and well-being of this entire parish. I know how government works. I've been there, done that. I passed resolutions. I targeted where I wanted to put them. I brought money to this parish on local, state, and federal levels. I brought money to the, to the school board through a tree reforestation project, $25,000 through econ, econ, uh, um, what they call them, um, I forget the name of that place, I'm sorry. Um, but that money was there through the hard work and dedication that we made through putting projects together on a parish level and pushing the money and getting money through the, the uh, Department, Ma Department of Agriculture. Nickelodeon, I'm sorry, it just came to me, ma'am. But we have a, a serious, serious issue that we gotta do, we gotta handle when we first get into office. And that's make sure that we can balance this budget in the next upcoming, uh, the next upcoming council. We have issues to deal with with millages. We have to educate the public on how crucial it is for millages. It's more than just sitting here and talking the talk. But I have talked the talk and I have walked the walk. I can prove it by having this, and I know a lot of people don't read. I got this. It's endorsements from the coast, all coastal parish presidents in Louisiana. I didn't get that from sitting here. The council oh, needs a private council Mr. that has the time to do it. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your candidates for St. Bernard Parish Council East. I couldn't get Nickelodeon out. I don't know why. Nickelodeon wouldn't come out. Okay, uh, we're now going to get started with our uh, form for St. Bernard Parish Council at Large West. Please find your seats. <clears throat> our candidates are Mr. Ray Loga and Mr. Richie Lewis. Candidates will be asked a total of three questions and then allowed a closing statement. The three resp question responses will be a minute and a half long with a 45 second rebuttal allotted at the discretion of the moderators. And then a closing statement will be a minute and a half long. We will now have the first question. You will have 90 seconds to respond, and a rebuttal period of 45 seconds will be granted as seen fit. First question, what would you do to diversify St. Bernard Parish's economic base and attract new businesses? Please be specific. Mr. Loga, we'll begin with you. Um, well, specifically to get to attract more businesses here, you need the people who are going to provide a consumption for those businesses, which is retails. I have um, started 
preliminary work, and you know, Mr. Clemens, with the chamber, that that I'm trying to do mimic some of the programs that we saw in Arizona, which is a locals first program, where we reward small businesses for employing small other local businesses and buying from local suppliers. I'm trying to do maybe a, a tax rebate or property rebate program where if you hire um, local employees and you buy from local suppliers that you would get a rebate. By doing that, we have the largest concentration of entrepreneurs in the United States right next door to us in New Orleans. If we can go ahead and present an environment for those young entrepreneurs where they can get uh, cheap overhead, they can get a start without uh, with less capital and possibly getting some rebates on their taxes and possibly at some point trying to lower a sales tax, they know that if they move their business here or start their business here in St. Bernard, they're going to be more competitive against their competition when starting up their new business. And hopefully down the line that if they do operate in St. Bernard and they, they come here and they see what a great place it is, they'll go ahead and put some roots down and try and, you know, set their family here and, and um, make a living here in St. Bernard. And that's what I would like to see happen. Thank you. Mr. Lewis? Thank you. Um, first, it's a two-part question, diversify the economic base, and that would be to really look at the Mississippi River and try to get some businesses towards the Mississippi River. We have a lot of room in the port area that we could attract businesses and manufacturers, and that would be the best place to start there. Um, to attract more retail business and things of those nature, we would need more residents. That comes with how we disperse these lots, how we handle these lots to get new, new construction going in houses. To, you get more residents, obviously you'll get more businesses, and the businesses you have will thrive. Um, there's already a lot of tax incentives out there for small businesses through GNO Inc. There's a lot of places that small businesses can already go um, for, for tax incentives, but that's good to have tax incentives, but you've got to have business. St. Bernard's a unique place to do business, and nobody knows that better than me because your whole audience is St. Bernard Parish. We don't have people that move through here to, that stop and shop and stop and do things and then move on. Nobody goes through St. Bernard Parish to do anything except to fish, right? We go to Metairie, we go to Slidell, but they don't come here. So you have to know that first, and you have to appease the people that live in St. Bernard Parish. So I think to, in order to bring new businesses, we need to know what we are, and we need to do that well. Mr. Logan will allow a 45-second rebuttal. Well, along the lines of diversification is right now we have a great school system, great sheriff's department. We have a hospital here with health care. The weak link for the last two years at least has been the government. And we need to make a change there. I know the other candidates and the other races have said the same thing. But we needed to make a change where we have confidence in government. And I'm just trying to point out some differences between me and Mr. Lewis. But two years ago, I asked for this president to step down. And at that time, you know, Mr. Lewis, I think his exact quote was, he's innocent until proven guilty. You know, and now, 26 indictments later, you know, now he votes for a resolution asking for him to step down. That's the type of lack of foresight and flip-flopping that we can't afford for another four years. Thank you. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Um, to answer that, two years ago, Dave Peralta was indicted on a rape charge with his wife, which was eventually dropped. The charges were dropped. The man was found not guilty. My opponent says we have a great sheriff's office and legal system, and I think we need to allow that system to work in the proper manner and not step in and make a knee-jerk reaction asking the parish president to resign when we don't have the power to make him resign. Nothing we can do, no, no way we can vote to make the president resign. So we need to know our place as well. Um, now, the second set of charges were all government related. They were all to do with, within this government building. So at that point, yes, I would support a resolution asking him to resign. But I'm not going to ask him to resign on a civil case like I said, that was later dropped. Had he resigned because we asked him to, could have caused legal action against us and cost the taxpayers money. Thank you. Uh, next question. Other than public perception, what major obstacles do you feel St. Bernard Parish must overcome to see growth? And how do you plan to address those issues if elected? Please be specific. And Mr. Lewis, we'll start with you. Did you say other than public reception? Other than public perception, perception, what major obstacles do you feel St. Bernard Parish must overcome to see growth? And how do you plan to address those issues if elected? Okay, well, public perception is the biggest, right? Um, so some of the issues we have are, again, I'll go to the lots and how they're dispersed and how we, how we handle the disbursement of lots. We've been doing a good job of auctioning the lots, and you're seeing some, 
some new construction as a result of auction lots, which are bringing new people. We've had an inventory of Katrina rebuilt homes for a long time. Young professionals do not want to live in a Katrina rebuilt home. They want new homes. They want new gated subdivisions. Um, and they want a fresh new look. And I think, I think that's um, one of the most important things that we could give to attract the new people at St. Bernard Parish. Thank you. Mr. Loga. Yes, obviously, you know, restoring confidence in the government. But one thing that I don't know if a lot of people realize is our property taxes. We have some of the highest millages of property taxes in the coastal Louisiana area for every parish. That's a business prohibitor from moving forward. That's something that we have to address, and the only way we can address that is by reducing the government budget, you know, by a certain percentage every year, try and reduce the expenditures, and that would give you the leeway to help with reducing those millages and not have the tax so high. When you have a business and you're looking to locate someplace and you look at all the parishes and you see St. Bernard is number one or two in millages and property taxes, right off the bat, you're looking at another parish. You know, and that's, I think that's one of the biggest things I hear when I'm traveling around. People are, are amazed at how high our millages are. And, and, and we can't lower that until we lower our expenditures and our budgets on a parish-wide basis. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lewis, do you have a rebuttal? Okay, thank you. We're going to move on to question three. Uh, what do you consider the greatest accomplishment of the current council over the past four years? And specifically, what was your role in that accomplishment? And Mr. Logo, we'll start with you. Whew, um, greatest accomplishment, it, it has not been a good last two years. I mean, as I'm not very proud of things we've done. Um, on a local level, what we've tried to do in, in District A, when I came into office, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to tell everybody how much I've given away, you know, how much I've given to people. What I can tell you is when I came into office, the uh, houses in, in District A, average cost was $82 a square foot. Now they're at $95 a square foot, and we've had sales recently in $120 a square foot. So I can tell you where your property values have been increasing. We have a housing boom going on right now in District A. Um, there's people that are interested in living there, there's businesses that want to move there. Part of the reasons we want to do the overlay is because in I-2 zoning, residential construction is not allowed. And by doing this overlay and bringing it down to commercial C-2, that will allow residential construction to start. We have people that are ready to, to take action and move in on that. On the, um, on the St. Claude Corridor, we have businesses there we, that are, are build, buying up. They're trying to develop and expand the cultural arts district there, which draws more interest and more people to move there in that area. And that, that's what the, the biggest accomplishments I think we've had in District A, trying to move forward. And I'm trying to grow there. And it started in District A and could try and grow it out. I'm not just trying to say only for Old Area, only District A. We've got to start somewhere and grow it out. And that's what I was trying to do. Thank you. Mr. Lewis. Yeah. Um, some of the greatest accomplishments that I've been involved in, one of them is through the HMGP program, and that's securing the money for a drainage project in the Lindell Court area. This problem has, this, this area has been having a drainage problem since way before my time being on the council. And, I, and when I got elected, it was one thing that I wanted to seek out and do was, was take care of these residents here. I mean, they flood in their homes just when a regular rain comes. Not doesn't have to be a great rain. That's that's one thing. Um, also, I pride myself on delivering a positive fund balance as chairman of the executive finance committee, three years in a row, and um, maintaining that positive fund balance. So that's that's two of the things that I would pride myself on being on the council. Uh, Mr. Logan, do you have a rebuttal? Yes. Um, some other items that I know we, we this council didn't kick the can down the road on the water safety issue. It was a safety issue. We had people's health at risk. And this council, you know, didn't kick the can down the road. I know it was unpopular with having to raise the water rates. They hadn't been risen in 17 years. It was time. We didn't kick the can down. We addressed it. Unfortunately, I had an amendment that was going to try and incrementally raise the water rates so it wouldn't impact family budgets and businesses as, as directly. But unfortunately, um, my opponent voted against that amendment and forced the, the water rates to double overnight. And that was an unfortunate thing, but I think it was, I'm proud that we, we didn't kick the can down the road. Uh, Mr. Lewis, 45 seconds. I, I did vote. That's, that's a true. I did vote against that because the truth is we have a $3 million, and if Mr. Logan would understand the budget, then he would know exactly why we couldn't do that. There's a $3 million 
um, depreciation line item that needs to be restored in the budget if we're going to maintain the pipes as we fix them. We can fix them all and have no money to maintain them, and in 10 years we right back in the same spot that we were sitting in a year ago. So as it would have been great to do it on an elevated scale, I would have loved that. Look, I got four water bills, right? Nobody would have loved that more than me. But the truth is, we couldn't do that. Um, the reality is, is, like Mr. Logue said, we didn't kick the can down the road. It was a tough decision, and it needed to be made, and I think we did the, made the right choice on all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we will now have your closing statements. You will have a minute and a half each. Mr. Lewis, we'll start with you. Thank you. My opponent wants to sit up here and try to take some elevated cheap shots at me. He wants to say that I voted to give myself a pay raise on the council. Well, that's just an outright lie. I haven't received a pay raise on the council. My salary's never been raised. I write a check for $30 a month to be a councilman because the pay doesn't cover the taxes and insurance. As a business owner, I know you want good candidates, you want people to do a good job, then you got to put something on the table for them. As Executive Finance Committee Chairman, I was involved in cutting the council's budget from $1.1 million to $580,000. And that's including the council pay raise, which, again, I didn't receive. That's for the next council. Also, um, he's going to say that I was the deciding vote and raising the water rates, I vote in the third seat. I'm not to decide and vote on any issue that comes across this council. Um, you can say I could have abstained. Well, people didn't elect me to abstain on votes. They elected me to t make the tough choices that need to be made to better the, for the residents of St. Bernard Parish. And as I know, everyone doesn't understand the water rate increase, but it had to happen. And to be perfectly honest, the administration didn't ask for the water rate increase. Mr. Loga single-handedly put that on the council agenda for the water rate increase. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Loga, your closing statement. Yes. Um, I did put the water rates on there because it was a public safety. We had people dying in St. Bernard Parish, and I wasn't about to walk away from that. Um, some items, you know, my, my opponent talks about the Executive Finance Committee. That Executive Finance Committee, when he was chairman, brought the $32 fee that got put on your water bill that after the, everything was audited, found out it wasn't necessary. That's when I realized I couldn't rely on the Executive Finance Committee to do their due diligence and do the research that was required. Now, and he says he didn't vote for himself for a raise. Okay, he voted a yes to, rate, to double a councilman's salary. And by bypassing his second term in District C, if he, if he wins this, his yes vote will almost triple his salary. So to say he didn't vote for a raise and, and, and go for it, that's just not true. One other thing that I could see is, is absenteeness. You know, on the Regional Planning Commission, the Valerie's Walkway, that project's two blocks from his house. It started with a $90,000 grant. Okay, the Regional Planning Commission got involved. We did some preliminary engineering. We got some eligible grants. We got an additional $300,000 grant in it. And now that walkway is a reality. And that walkway is two blocks from his house, and he couldn't make one meeting. He made one Regional Planning Committee the whole time he was in office to, for that project. That's the type of absenteeness that we can't have. That's what brings money and projects in St. Bernard Parish, and that's what I, I stand for. Um, I would like you to support me and vote me, vote for me in the next election, in this, and I thank you for your support, and I thank the Chamber. Uh, thank you both, gentlemen, your candidates for uh, St. Bernard Council at Large West. The next race will be uh, Louisiana House of Representatives, District 103.
Okay, uh, Louisiana House of Representatives, District 103. We're going to start the forum here. If everyone can please find their seats, we'll begin. Um, Mr. Garrett Fellow currently isn't here, so we will uh, we'll allow a, a statement to be read for the closing statements, and we'll ask Mr. Honeycutt the questions uh, that we've prepared. Okay? So uh, you'll be given a total of three questions and then allow a closing statement. Uh, the three question responses will be a minute and a half long, and the closing statement will be a minute and a half long. You will now, uh, we'll now have the first question. You'll have 90 seconds to respond. All right, first question, Mr. Honeycutt. What can you do at the state level to facilis facilitate the growth of St. Bernard Parish? Well, first of all, thank you for the question. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, what we can do at the state level to faci facilitate the growth of this parish is to stop, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a state budget that every year has been budget deficit spending. Um, while I was on the council, we never had one budget deficit spending. The state budget is a mess. Um, what we've got to do, what we've got to do is we've got to get in there and we've got to clean it up. Um, also, in that process, we have the tax, the tax deductions, tax exclusions. Uh, there's almost $7 billion of tax exemptions for big businesses in the state. Um, we've got to make sure, and it's, you know, it's, it's very irresponsible what's been done in Baton Rouge for the past eight years. What we've got to do and what the next, what the next four years is going to be is cutting back on those tax expenditures. So what, what the next state representative has to do is fight to make sure that the things are cut don't hurt St. Bernard Parish's economy. For instance, the motion, uh, motion picture tax credits. You know, we've got a booming, booming film industry down here. We've got to make sure that that tax credit stays intact and we can, we can continue to grow that industry down here. So. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, next question. How does your professional background and experience make you the most qualified candidate for this office? Well, I've been on the parish council for four years. Um, in that time, I've started and operated a few small businesses. Um, I currently am attending Tulane University for my MBA. I'm a few hours short of that. Uh, hopefully, it should be done within a few more months. Um, you know, that's, that's my, my business background, my business expertise. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, been a long process going back to school, and I thank, thank my family for allowing me to, to take the time out and do so. Um, Four years ago, I was 24 years old. I was elected to the parish council with 60% of the vote. Um, you know, I looked at that as an overwhelming vote of confidence in a young man. I've come a long way in those four years. I've served for three and a half years on the Regional Planning Commission. Um, I've formed, forged and formed relationships with people from around this region. Um, so I think what, what's going to need to happen for our next state representative is they're going to need to be able to, to, across party lines, Republican and Democrat, um, because our issues here see no, party, see no parties. Uh, we don't, you know, crime sees no boundaries. Crime sees no parties. Um, so uh, our next state representative is going to have to work across both party lines to solve the issues that need to be done here. And I've got a proven track record of forging relationships around the greater New Orleans area and throughout the state of Louisiana. And I'm looking forward to continuing doing that as well. Okay. All right, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, our final question is, how does your party affiliation affect your decision making when representing St. Bernard Parish? And when your party alignment does not best serve your constituents, how will you respond? Yeah, great question. Um, this election has been, has been very party politicized. Um, and I'm not a party politics kind of guy. I'm a common sense solutions kind of guy. Um, so when it comes down to in a, in a, an issue that affects our parish and affects our, this district, I'm always going to side on the people. I will always side for the people of this parish. Um, you know, we've, my opponent recently mailed out um, a flyer with a gubernatorial candidate saying, and that's 20 points down in the polls, um, saying that uh, this candidate needs his help in Baton Rouge. All right, you're not going to get that from me. I'm not going to Baton Rouge to help the governor. I'm going to Baton Rouge to help you. And that's my marching orders. And that's what I'm going to do. OK. Thank you. Uh, we will now have your closing statements. And uh, we're going to have Mr. Honeycutt give his 90 second closing <laughs> statement. And then we'll have a statement read from uh, Mr. Garofalo. Uh Mr. Honeycutt. Can I rebut myself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. I got into this race because, and I, I, 
I mean, two months ago, if you'd asked me, three months ago, if you'd asked me if I'd be in this race, I would have laughed at you. Um, you know, but the closer it got, the more apparent, um, the more apparent that it became that we needed new leadership. Um, you know, and it, it was very apparent in the election when 61% of the people voted for a new state representative. They want a new voice. They want somebody that's going to represent them, and they haven't felt that that's been fulfilled over the past four years. Um, so that's why I decided to run. Um, you know, uh, it, uh, along the lines of, of my previous question, our current state representative served the interest of our current governor, um, you know, against the wishes and the request of his local constituents. Uh, and that won't happen with me. And that's why I'm running. I'm running for you. I'm not running for the state party politics. I'm not running to be the state representative. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking for a title. Um, you know, this is more of a calling for me. Um, this is to do the right thing for you all and do the right thing for this district. And that's why I'm in this race. And that's my promise to you is not to play party politics in Baton Rouge. I'm going to come here and I'm going to take my marching orders from everybody here from District 103. And I'm going to go to Baton Rouge and I'm going to work to get those done. And I'm going to deal with the consequences in Baton Rouge. Thank you. And uh, we'll now have a statement read from Mr. Garofalo. I'm Rain Garofalo. Um, I'm just going to read something on behalf of my dad, our really hardworking and honest state representative. Um, I have two conflicting events tonight, including the Coastal Zone Management Forum meeting, and unfortunately, I will not be able to attend the Chamber Forum. I did attend the previous forum, but to do so, I had to miss an important meeting of the Southern States Energy Board. Uh, the work of a legislator does not stop during a campaign. I believe that the voters know my strong record of fighting to protect and restore our coast, cut wasteful spending, reduce taxes, reduce insurance rates, and make our state the best for business. Anyone with questions or suggestions regarding my candidacy, my voting record, or my vision for the future is encouraged to call my office at 504-277-4729, and I always appreciate the input. Thank you, God bless, and go Tigers. Okay, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your candidates for uh, Louisiana House of Representatives District 103. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll have a short break to change things over, and then we'll have up our parish president candidates. All right, before we uh, get started with our final form of the evening, uh, just a, one quick announcement from the gathering. Um, we know that you have many campaign signs in your, at your homes as well as uh, yard stakes and wood frames and extra flyers. Uh, if you're done with them, please recycle them after the campaign. Um, the wood can be used, the stakes can be recycled, and the uh, Signs can be reused for painting projects by nonprofits. So any, anything you have left over after your campaign, please contact the gathering at 
264-5202 for more information with uh, Mr. Aaron Johnson. So, all right. That being said, I'm asking everyone please find their seats for the final form of this evening for the, uh, the race of parish president. And our candidates are Mr. Wayne Landry and Guy McGinnis. Candidates will be asked a total of three questions and then allowed a closing statement. The three responses may be a minute and a half long with a 45 second rebuttal allotted at the discretion of the moderators. And the closing statement will be a minute and a half long. We'll now have the first question. You will each have 90 seconds to respond. A rebuttal period of 45 seconds will be granted as seen fit. Question one. You both have extensive experience serving as members of the St. Bernard Parish Council. Drawing from your experiences, which program or department could better serve the St. Bernard Parish if provided with additional funding? Conversely, which program or department requires greater efficiency and could operate effectively with reduced funding? And Mr. Guinness, we'll begin with you. I appreciate the question. Um, I've said it many times that resident services, the department that um, um, cites and oversees our neighborhoods and code enforcement could use extra funding uh, and more employees. St. Bernard Parish, um, at this point in our time and in our recovery, we need code enforcement um, throughout our parish, especially in neighborhoods where we have blight and high grass, and uh, we, we need to make sure that our community development doesn't issue permits for buildings that's going to devalue our property uh, in our neighborhoods. We have $4 million sitting in the bank from CDBG funds that we can utilize to clean up our neighborhoods. Cut grass, demolish homes, and work with our neighborhood associations to build up property value. So that department, Tim, can use extra funding, um, obviously, throughout our parish. We, we live it every day, and we don't see it because we pass by it every day. But when people come into St. Bernard Parish, young families to buy homes, they see it. And we need to clean that up um, so that we can get um, new residents in these areas and, and we can be proud to um, live uh, and raise our children in our neighborhoods. Thank you, Ms. McGinnis. Uh, Mr. Landry. Well, I, I believe that the road department is one department that could use more funding. Um, if you look around St. Bernard Parish right now, especially like on Jean Lafitte Parkway and uh, Patricia Street and those types of streets, there are a lot of road repairs that we can't do. Street lighting can't be uh, performed. All of those things are quality of life issues at the end of the day that help uh, maintain property values and elevate them. Uh, you know, that, that's one department that I think could use more money. In terms of efficiencies, you know, uh, y'all have heard me along the campaign trail say that I wanted to develop a quality of life department. That would include code enforcement as well as making sure we have clean air and clean water. Um, efficiencies in terms of permits and whatnot, having more technology available to those departments uh, would also be a, pl a plus for us if we could make them more efficient in terms of being able to crank out more permits as we enhance and restore faith in government, we should be able to attract more populace to come back to St. Bernard. So I think those two would be the main two I would look at in terms of how could we help the most with more money and more efficiencies. Okay. Mr. McGinnis, do you have a response? I would just say I think Wayne's right about the road department. As you have strengthened your code enforcements, you're going to need more people in the road department to handle those complaints. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll move on to the uh, next question. What would you do to diversify St. Bernard Parish's economic base, attracting a larger portion of moderate, middle, and upper income residents and the businesses which will employ them? Mr. Landry. Well, first of all, you know, I think you have to be methodical about a plan that you would put in place that would actually uh, accomplish that. And I, I've said this time and time again, I believe there's four components to any community that will allow those kind of developments that are, to occur. One is you have to have good educational system, which we do. You have to have people feel safe, which we have a good police department, they do. You have to have access to health care, 
we do. And then you have to have a government that people have faith and confidence in and that, that's going to be fair and equitable and handle people's money right and be, uh, you know, not on a take, so to speak. And I'm not indicating I was as, but it can't be dysfunctional. Let's just say that and have a good image. That's the missing component in order to accomplish that. You know, once we're able to get our house in order first, then what we have to do after restoring people's faith in our government, we have to go out and be cheerleaders. We have to market what we have here in St. Bernard. The number one asset we have in St. Bernard, and the number one thing that makes St. Bernard safer than any other community, is we have good people. Our people are good people, and that's what ha we have to market. But we have to give them the resources and the tools in order to attract businesses, in order to attract any type of population uh, coming back, we have to give those tools to the people and it has to start with getting our own house in order first. And, you know, having said that, um, just want to take this opportunity to say that there's a lot of things going on about people that work in government. Everybody has a job that wants to keep it. So I didn't want to, I wanted to kind of put that room to sleep while I was answering that question. Okay. Uh, Mr. McGinnis. That's funny because I'm, when I get elected, I'm fire everybody. So somebody's <laughs> been <laughs> I can't have a boat. So, yeah, right. So <laughs> something's happening here, right? Um, so I just think we need leadership in St. Bernard Parish. We need someone who is going to pull this parish together from east to west and is going to actually care about the future of our, our parish to diversify and to bring businesses and to bring people into our parish. You know, I have a family. I raised my three children here. They are college educated, and there's public servants in the public school system. You know, I invest. They all live here, they all pay taxes here, and they all um, raise their children in the public school system. My daughters, all three of them work in the public school system. My wife works in the public school system, and so do I. So if you're wondering why I want to get out, that's why. You know, all, my whole family's there, and I got eyes on me all day. But I'm so proud of our family and being public servants. So it means something to me. I'm not just here to be a parish president. I'm not just running for office. I need St. Bernard Parish to be prosperous and um, move forward in the next four years so my grandchildren will be able to live here in the future. So it means something to me. Bringing people in here from uh, New Orleans, we need to connect to that some kind of way, and we need to bring middle to upper income families in St. Bernard Parish, and we need to attract them with the amenities that they want in a community. And Mr. Landry talked about safety. Education, well, we need to be clean. We need to clean up our, our community, and then people might look at us a little harder. Uh, Mr. Landry, do you have a response? No. Okay, great. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, third and final question. Uh, we'll start with Mr. McGinnis. What makes you the most qualified candidate for parish president? Tim, I, I believe I have a unique set of uh, uh, qualifications and experience. You know, I've spent 16 years in our public school system at Chalman High School. And I see a lot of the social problems that we have in our community. I see them come in, and I see them go out. Um, we, we need to deal with our youth through recreation, and we need to um, uh, uh, fix that problem that we have. So I spent time in that. When I got out of college, I've been in public accounting for 12 years as an executive level uh, accountant with a large re regional CPA firm here in the city. I worked with internal controls and budgeting um, in multi-million dollar um, um, in institutions. So I know how to manage a budget. I know how to manage people. I know how to respect employees. We have some of the best employees in the region. We need to bring the people that are on a lower scale and bring them up to average of, of the, the region. And so we're talking about my, my qualifications. I served on the Water and Sewage Commission um, as a young man and um, was involved in extending the water line down to the eastern part of the parish for water pressure. And I was a coach at our playgrounds, and I played at our playgrounds. And I'm, I have such gratitude for the people who took care of me um, growing up. All I want to do is give back and be a public servant. Thank you. Mr. Landry. Well, I want to start with my educational background. My education is in public administration. Uh, you know, that's my, my college degree. Uh, what I do for my entire adult life is I've been a chief executive officer, of, uh, you know, chief financial officer, financial analyst, pl planning finances, starting up new businesses, uh, you know, 
and I think the things that have made me successful is my hard work ethic. You know, I work really hard. Uh, when you look at what, what our parish needs right now, it needs the skill sets of someone who's managed hundreds of employees. It, it needs the skill sets of someone who's been in and out the trenches of business, who understands business, who understands business finances, who actually has performed those managing 90 and $100 million budgets with hands-on. So I think those skill sets uh, are, are the ones that I possess that uh, are unique uh, for parish government, coupled with my experience uh, in government business. But at the end of the day, you know, when we look at, you know, being a public servant and whatnot, you know, my family has a long tradition of being public servants, you know, starting with my father, Floyd Landry, you know, who, who's worked almost his entire life as a public servant. Many of you know I've dedicated an entire seven years of my life, uh, gave up my businesses to do something good for the parish uh, in terms of building a hospital. So, you know, I didn't do it for, for money, didn't make a penny. I did it to better my community. I'm not running for this uh, position because I need a job. I'm running for this position to get the job done. We need a new image, and I want to be the guy that brings our new image to us. Mr. McGinnis, do you have a response? No, sir. Okay. Uh, before we uh, hear your closing statements, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you gentlemen for being here, as well as all of our candidates that attended tonight and the, uh, the crowd for, for joining us. I want to thank the... Uh, the gentleman from Responsibility Advocates. And if you get a chance, please go see their videos on Facebook or YouTube. Um, and at this time, we will have your closing statements. So uh, Mr. Landry, we'll start with you, 90 seconds. All right, first of all, I want to thank the Chamber, and I also want to thank the Responsibility Advocates, Matt and Pastor Ballard. I mean, you guys did a real good job. And I would encourage everyone to go into YouTube and look at those videos. Uh, I think that'll tell you a lot more about uh, the qualifications and uh, our candidacies, you know. I want to also thank the public for allowing us to come into their homes and in their mailboxes and uh, aggravating them as we brought our platform to the people of St. Bernard Parish. It's very diffi difficult to campaign throughout St. Bernard Parish. It's uh, physically very large, you know, and I want to thank all our, our workers. At the end of the day, you know, uh, we're going to have a new president in St. Bernard Parish. I would encourage everyone to elect the, the most qualified candidate uh, because, you know, we, we really have to get it right. We have to take this parish, pick it up by its bootstraps, and move it forward. We have to get it right. And at the end of the day, I want everybody to vote for me because it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Uh, please, please hold your applause. Please hold your applause. Uh, please, uh, go ahead. <laughs> well now, I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> well now, uh, we'll now have the closing statement from uh, Mr. McGinnis. You know, there was a general that once said, when your opponent starts using your tactics, they've already lost. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what that means in that. You know? I could just do this time, man. So, um, you know, that, that, that's a good thing about this campaign. I want to say that. I hope I have some time to talk about how proud I think Wayne is and, and our families are about being in this campaign. It's been about St. Bernard and putting the image first. And that's what we've been doing. And, and we, we can kid around about some of these things. And, uh, you know, we're spending money. We're going into the homes of, of the citizens of this parish and the great citizens of this parish. And it's been nothing but um, um, a proud moment in my time in life in doing this. Um, you know, I want to talk about the firemen uh, for a second. You know, I was disappointed in Mr. Logan Lorelli talking about the $32 fee and really didn't need it. At that time, we had a finance department that was giving us numbers that we, we didn't know what we were doing with. We put that $32 fee on, on there to save firefighters' jobs. We saved 56 firefighters' jobs. Your children, my children, if needed a first responder, they were going to get it, and I was going to put that on that fee. When it came back, I worked for a year with the administration telling them that we were going to give that money back. In the United States of America, I don't know of any politicians that put a fee on, collected it, and gave it back because they didn't need it. But our firefighters never, ever lost a step. And I'm proud of that as being a councilman. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you. These are your candidates for parish president.
All right, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Please travel safe.